Today I got a Game Gear from Sega. Uh, this is a Japanese version, still complete in box. Uh, apparently the games don't run that well. A very known issue with these is busted capacitors. So I've actually gone ahead and ordered a, a set of these for replacement. And I thought I'd be smart this time and actually get a couple of games so that we can try out and see what's going wrong. I'm going to open this up, we'll have a look inside, and we're going to try out and, and see what goes wrong with it. So this turned out to be in rather nice condition. It actually had all the styrofoam, all the booklets, everything still with it, so that's a good sign. Uh, put in some batteries, um, I'm going to put in a game now, and use Ren and Stimpy for testing. So. It turns on, but really difficult to see anything at all. Did notice that under certain angles you could see something, but Let's just try it again. I see a faint Sega logo. Some text. Yeah, there you go. Under certain angles, you see something, but this to me looks like a like a something that you always see with uh, the Game Gear, which is just dried out old capacitors. So I'm going to be doing a full replace on that, and hopefully, we can get this thing fully working again. I've opened the Game Gear up. You need to be careful of one thing when you're doing this. This is not a Phillips head screw. This is a game bit, which is similar to the SNES or the Virtual Boy. Um, so yeah, be, be wary when you're opening this up yourself. Now, you can't just pull this lid off. You need to carefully open this up because it's connected via these cables here. And you can unplug this and this one, and then it'll come clean off. I'm gonna do that now and I'll show you what the board looks like. So I've opened up the Game Gear. Um, these are the capacitors. They're all encapsulated in this uh, plastic thing. And I wanted, I've put on macro because I wanted to show you guys. Just look at those joints. They're, they're really, really dry. And it's not just the capacitors I've, I've noticed. Um, I was doing around somewhere over here. Yeah, there you go. That that looks quite dry as well. So <clears throat> what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be, well, first of all, I, I will be replacing all these capacitors. Let me just show you some of the other ones. This looks quite bad. Um, but other than doing a, a recap, I'm going to be reflowing a lot of these dry joints as well. This looks pretty okay. I'm not sure what caused this. Maybe it's just been in storage for a really long while, while and not used much. I don't know. But yeah. That looks, looks dry. Really, really dry. So um, I'm going to take a picture of this um, so that I know which capacitor should be going where. And I'll take off these and I'll do it on camera so I can show you how, uh, what technique I'm using for that. It's fairly simple. So something that didn't dawn on me earlier is there was no audio, of course, when we tried Ren and Stimpy. Um, this is the other side of the board. And this is the part that has the, uh, the audio volume wheel and the headphone jacks. And as you can see, oh, hold on, let me zoom. This cap right here is doing the, I'm trying to get focus, it's, it's doing the same thing as on the, the main board. It's got some really dry joints, so it could well be that is the reason why the audio wasn't outputting anything at all. So 
yeah, when you get to redoing or recapping your game gear, don't forget the both the audio board as well as the power board. Now you might still get power out of it sometimes, um, but it's just a good idea to redo the whole thing whenever you're opening up your machine anyway. All right, this is going to be slightly difficult doing it on camera, but I'm going to try and show you my procedure of getting rid of these Game Gear capacitors. Like I said earlier, these are plastic encapsulations around the actual capacitors, so you want to get rid of that first. They're glued to the board, so you need to be really careful that you don't accidentally rip any traces off. So the way I go about this is I use, uh, this is actually a hobby for uh, hobby uh, snips for um, uh, Warhammer, but they prove really useful for doing repairs as well. So you're going to take this and you're going to take it along the length of the encapsulation and you're going to slightly pry until the the black cap comes loose. Now it'll most likely it'll break off, that's not a problem. Just need to go real slow and just be real careful that you're not ripping off any of the pads. So, you can hear it click and then I'm going to keep prying. Don't try and use too much force and actually I think it's because this this has been so old, but this has come loose. So the next step, what you want to do is, if you've got this free, don't don't yank it. Uh, next step would be to use the soldering iron and heat up the legs, and it'll come off as a whole. Um, I'm going to do this around the whole thing, uh, get all of them off. Actually, I'll do a couple more on on here um, just to see if. If any uh, any of them give a problem, maybe oh there you go. This is what I was talking about. So this is actually a tiny little encapsulation that's come off, and you're going to want to do that around the whole board so that the legs of the capacitors inside of it are freed up. And this one seems to have, yep, just pried it loose. Not going to do much more to that. I don't want to damage the traces to the board, otherwise it will be held to repair. Same goes for that one. And that one is loose now. So yep, I'm going to do that too. Oh, this one was already loose apparently. Another one shattered, that's fine though. Came loose. And I think that's the last one over here. Now, when resoldering this one, that's going to be a bit more tricky, seeing as it's right up against the connector. This connector is actually soldered onto the board, so you can't move it. So you need to be, well, need to have real steady hands or have decent soldering skills and or equipment. Um, so seeing as this is the toughest one, I'll usually start by replacing this one. Yeah, that one's loose as well. So I'm going to heat up my soldering iron. I'll get back to you. I have actually gotten all the capacitors off. Some of them were actually more tricky because of it didn't seem as obvious previously on um, on when I was showing you on close up what was going on. But some of them were really really corroded, and the telltale sign is when you heat up the capacitor legs with the soldering iron, it smells horribly like fish. So yeah, whenever you come across that, you know you've got a bad cap. 
Um, I'm going to try and get a closer view on this. So yeah, all these shiny little dots are previous capacitor positions that I've cleaned up. Um, it's the big one here. And actually the other side, um, I had a hard time. I was showing you um, this capacitor before and this little, I think it's a capacitor, yeah, it's C22, that was so corroded, it had fallen off when it was heating up uh, this leg already, and heat di dissipated, and it just, yeah, it just flow up, flew off, and it took along the pad underneath it, so I had to improvise a bit and stitch as much as possible here. Um, slightly overlapping but I checked with the um, multimeter and there is no place here uh, that has a short due to this so this should be good and I missed <laughs> I missed this pad I'm gonna have to clean that up next um, and, and that's the last thing so yeah I'm gonna <laughs> do that one last pad and then I'll show you guys how to uh, how I'm gonna be replacing a capacitor and how to make them fit as much as possible on the board. So I've uh, cleaned up that last point. Uh, that, that's more visible, there's a bit of flux still left on there, but I'll clean that off. Um, so for the capacitors, um, I'm gonna be showing you uh, these ones here. There's a couple of things that you need to think of when you're placing these. You can't just jam them in there. You need to kind of think about the way you orient things. Um, if you take the other half of the shell, see there's this round thing, there's a couple of these points sticking out and the, the battery compartments. Now you can't just wedge this in between. So you're going to be looking at this and the, um, the PCB actually has the orientation on there. So that makes it slightly more, oh, well, slightly easier. Um, what you want to do is you want to think ahead on how you're going to be placing these and then check against the PCB or sorry against the um, the back half of the uh, of the unit and constantly try and adjust so that it doesn't doesn't overlap with any of the plastic bits that would be put on here from the other side Um, this area is, is particularly crowded and <clears throat> as you can see the other side of the board here there's quite some things that would go over it that could potentially push up against it so what you're what you want to do is um, trim the legs leaving a bit of space to make adjustments later on so I'm going to be replacing all of these and then I'll, I'll show the results. So to recap, uh, it's been done. Just, just wanted to point out some of the uh, more difficult ones. I had slightly larger caps than previous, uh, the original ones on here. And this one in particular, oh, let me point it out, that one, slightly more difficult to get on there. So I had to bend the legs over itself in order to avoid having it get into this area. And uh, the other one was these two. Um, this one actually was, well, that way, but because it's longer, this one didn't fit that way anymore, so I had to put it to the other side. I checked with the, the, the back half, and that doesn't seem to obstruct anything. While I was doing that one, <coughs> I also redid the ones up here and these three on the power board. So I'm going to put this together and uh, we'll see what what it comes up with. Moment of truth. I put the two halves back together. I didn't put the screws back in just in case something still doesn't work. Uh, it makes it easier to get back in and, and do more work where needed. Um, I'm going to turn it on and we'll see what happens. Well, 
There we go. Seems to work. Let's see if the audio works this time. Ah, perfect. That seems to be quite loud as well. So. Here we go. Fully working. So. Hope you enjoyed that. And um, as I said in the previous movie, I, I still got a couple more machines on the way. I'll be updating the video for the Sega Dreamcast next, where I'm going to be doing a BIOS mod to it. Um, I also still got the, the Sega 32X. This seems to be a very common theme going on here, the Segas, but I'll keep an eye out on uh, other stuff. I have a Virtua Boy that I need to fix the, the screens on, so plenty to keep coming. So hope you enjoyed this, and until next time.